police, the police organization? Police and the medical people, and, and being endorsed by like Scripps Integrated Medicine. You got a badge or something, like an honorary badge? Or well, something? it's interesting. I did get an honorary badge. It was a long time I ago. I did my I, research. You did do your research, <laughs> yes. Um, I actually had the privilege, believe it or not, to work with the actual first psychic who worked with the police department in, in, in Los Angeles. And she was responsible for working this on the is Hillside. This a big town. Yes. She was working on the Hillside Strangler case, which was a huge case. Right. And so, you know, my specialty was always dead people. But every once in a while, she'd have a case that she would want my, you know, kind of like insights or expertise on. And uh, so, you know, I got brought onto it. And, you know, I didn't get the L.A. badge, but I got the Tustin Police badge. You, know. you got a badge. Yeah, I, but I got a badge. Yeah, yeah, so. <laughs> okay. So, so... I would imagine that the personality also helped you work with certain people. I mean, these are these are people that are. are I, I wouldn't think that they're believers. They they just they want the answers, and and obviously you gave it to them. Yeah, I mean, you know, this was Betty's specialty. I quite frankly never really liked working with the police hmm. um, because first of all, it's like when you're. How do I say this? A lot of times when you're working with dead people, let's just say in a crisis situation, let's just say a murder, mm -hmm. um, you are not always privy to that information. Uh, in, in other words, it's sort of like you can't like punch up the, the clock here and say, oh, who done it on this day and the way it was done does not work that way. Okay. Because you see, I'm working as a medium. I'm not working as a psychic working on a case. I'm working with making that connection with that person that's passed over. Okay. So there's there's a few variables. One of those variables may be quite literally, it's not meant to be known, period. Okay. Or I'm not meant to be known to pass it on for whatever reason, whether that's to protect me or whether it, I'm just not supposed to give out that information. I couldn't tell you. I really have no idea. Hmm. Um, the other variable maybe is that when once somebody makes their transition, you see, we on this earth plane, we're still tied in to visually feeling what happened to them at that moment of their passing. Mm -hmm. They're not tied into it. They're not there. They've left their body. That's like a memory. It's like, um, have you ever had like a, okay, have you ever had like a car accident or something like that happen to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. While that was happening for you, at that moment, you were in another dimension. Oh, truly, I do Very clearly, this. all right? Yeah. You, you, you probably felt nothing, mm -hmm. no physical pain True. or anything, okay? It's when the accident was over, when you do the, the memory thing, that you start to feel the aches and the pains and all sure. the stuff that happens for it. So something happens in our consciousness. So when we physically leave our body, that was at a memory time. That was at a memory time at that place. We're not there now. Mm -hmm. And see, it's like they don't really want to go back there. They don't want to revisit that because to them, that was a memory. Mm -hmm. So they're into like, obviously, this is where I'm supposed to be now. And I want you to know, because I love you, that I'm okay. That I'm okay. You know, and, 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 and I have to say that I heard you say something that ties into this really nicely. That, you know, when, when people lose somebody that's dear to them... I, I, I'm sure everybody reacts differently. Everybody reacts differently. But for the most part, if we truly love that person and we enjoy being with them, there, there's, there's some crying or there's some, you know, and it might last a while and mm -hmm. there's some missing them and all that. And I would think that of all people, you would be the last one to have to go through that because you could see them a minute later and you could talk to them. And yet, in your personal experiences with, I know you've lost a nephew mm -hmm. and you lost the grandmother when you were little, mm -hmm. that you still had your process, your human process. Absolutely. Because grief is grief. And when we go through any loss it is in our life, I mean, it doesn't mean that I know I'm not going to see him again. It doesn't mean that I haven't had contact with him because, you know, he shows up every once in a while when he decides to be a pain in my rear. Your nephew. But, you know, oh, yeah. Um, he shows up, interesting enough, a lot when I'm working with children. Mm. So it's almost like, you know, he's like, come over here, my Anna, you know, check you out. Um, so that's his dominance. But it does not mean that I still don't miss him. The three-dimensional him. The hug. Yes, of course, the physical, okay. yes. Mm. Um, he, he was very young when he passed. So it was like, you know, well, his memories ended at that, at that age of 24, and there's not going to be, at least in... This dimension. You know, you're confirming something. I had a, a an out-of-body type experience, and 
I actually came away with it with something else that that we're the, the one thing that we can't do in that dimension is touch each other, hug each other. Yes, yes. That physical. Right. And that maybe part of why we come into the physical is so that we could have that. I, I think that's it's part of the earth experience. And that's why it's so difficult for people to wrap their head around the fact that when we leave our body, that we can still have that connection of love. It's just, it's just, it's different. And it's sort of like, you know, if you've had a dream of somebody mm. where you have this unbelievable, what you would call quote unquote emotional experience or similar to an emotional experience in that dream state. And it, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's like this, you know, openless, endless kind of love feeling uh, that is very different than the physical because right. when we're in that state, we don't really feel the physical because we're in an, an altered state. That's why I'm saying mm. if you've had an experience where were of an accident or something like that, you are literally altered. So when when people have these issues of like, that's where they go to with somebody who's passed, I go like, don't go there because they're not there. Mm. You know, I guarantee you, if you were in a, in a 757 or 747, what are they, are, and you're like doing one of these, trust me, you're going to be gone way before the, mm. <laughs> the point it lands. Just because but the fact that we're, we're physically going to be dying, mm. that's number one. But there is something that happens within our consciousness okay. that we know that, okay, it's time and that's wow. that's sort of the deal. Right. That's why the soul always knows prior to passing, four mm. to six months that we're going to pass, irregardless of how. Besides that experience uh, that we just talked about of, of being able to connect um, and yet you still have your grief and all that, how does this ability affect you personally like your your day-to-day you're walking down the street and does somebody pop in and say hey i'm dead now and go away or tell somebody this and um yes and no um there is what i call and i don't know what other words for it there's a boundary program okay and that boundary means that uh, number one i'm not allowed to go into a vibration without permission there's got to be there's got to be a level of permission that has to happen that's number one but number two I, i i would go nuts because if every person I came in contact with, if their relatives came to me, you know, yeah. <laughs> so there's a space with that, and there's a boundary where, where I've learned after years of doing this work, where you know it's like I've learned to separate enough, or it's like you gotta like be where you are until I'm ready to open up that door. Okay. Now, when I'm in working capacity, um, it's harder because that door is open. That door is yeah. kind of open, and when I'm even when I'm done working. Um, it takes me at least a good hour, if not an hour and a half, to come sort of back. So if I happen to be going out to dinner, like right afterwards, yeah. it's really common for me to pick up things. <laughs> the restaurant's more crowded than yeah, it would have been. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yes, exactly. So, you mm. know, you, it's, it's, you learn to work on that. But I think if anybody was to ask people who know me, they will tell you that Suzanne's never all there <laughs> because I well, really to know. I really do live in, <laughs> I really do live in two different worlds yeah. so um, and I've had situations where you know people have had you know said let's go have dinner on this night and and I've learned that p- please either email me or put a message on my phone machine because if I'm working I will have no memory of it and so they'll, they'll be sitting there waiting for me to show up. And <laughs> Interesting. And I, and I never got that message. Yeah. I'm going to ask you a silly fun question. Halloween's coming up. Mm-hmm. Does that mean anything to the beings on the other side, or is that just us? Like Dia de la Muerte, you know? Yes, yes. Um, it, it doesn't mean, it, well, I do this obviously professionally. So, if, you know, if, if I was only going to work three days in the year. Yeah, no, 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 of so. course. But um, I, Are I, they celebrating on Halloween in costumes I think, or something? I, I don't think they're celebrating in costumes, but I will tell you, I'm interested enough, there's three sequential days in a row right around that time that are very powerful. And the, the, the deal with, with Halloween, which is actually Holy Eve, is that traditionally it was a pagan hos- holiday. Okay. And we all know about the pagans. And what their whole thing was that there was a veil between this world and the other world that they believe was very thin on that day of Halloween. Okay. So what they would do is they would go out into the woods and they would talk with nature because that's originally what the pagans did. Everything was about mm-hmm. the sun and the moon and nature and spirits and that was the so whole thing. So they didn't thing. go into the woods to trick or treat. They were No, trying but to... the trick or treat is that are you going to get a trick or are you going to get a trick in terms of the communication of the message? Oh, seriously? Yes. Yeah, so that's where that came. Oh, this came. is cool. I'm glad yeah. I asked this question. So that's how that came about. And so the, what happened is the church freaked out for a change. 
And they said, well, we can't have these pagans running around the woods and doing this. We have to do something about that. Mm. So they sat around, and I guess at the moment they couldn't come up with a saint. So they decided instead of a saint, they decided to call it Old Souls Day. Old Souls Day is actually November the 1st. Right. It's the contradiction to Holy Eve or Halloween. And, and the Dies de Morta is actually the second. So that, for some reason, that, that, that time period was all predominantly focused toward people that are passed over or the spirit world. Yeah. So I, I think it's kind of really interesting. That's actually a good question. Yeah, it's a good, it is a good question. Thank you for answering You're that. welcome. But it is a, and interesting because there are a lot of traditions, you know, from the trick or treat and what, where, where they came about so that, you know, you wanted to keep them happy. So you would give them, you know, the acknowledgments, or you, or if you want to call it an acknowledgement, or you can give them the treats or whatever it might be. But all that's how that all stuff all came out of there. Well, Suzanne, this has been a treat. Mine too. Indeed, Mine too. a treat. And I'm looking forward. I know we're going to do more things together, and I'm looking I'm forward sure to that. I'm sure that that's true, Filippo. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> In the meantime. Maybe we'll do some in Italy too. <laughs> Let's. Let's do it. I speak Italian. I know you so, do. And you speak dead. I, I, so and and we, then that's a universal language. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, you got me beat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Suzanne Northrup, I am Filippo Voltaggio, and this has been a special edition of Life Changes.